Frankensteak. <laughs> nice, juicy Frankensteak. This fat, rare cooked filet mignon is not what it seems. We used meat glue on cheap beef scraps to fake a steak good enough to please a professional chef. Looks pretty nice. It looks almost too nice. <laughs> Meat glue was a powder officially known as transglutaminase. Originally, the natural enzyme was harvested from animal blood. Now it's primarily produced through the fermentation of bacteria. Added to meat, it forms a nearly invisible and permanent bond to any other meat you stick it to. Chef Stefan Terrier of Porbaco Restaurant in San Francisco takes food seriously. He doesn't use meat glue in his restaurant, but like many chefs, he knows how it works, and he agreed to show us. This is just cubed beef. I'm going to take this powder now and, and dust it liberally over the meat pieces, and then just kind of tumble them around. The coated stew meat went into a circular tin to give it a nice round filet mignon shape. He also decided to make a New York strip out of thin cuts of round steak. Adding water makes a soupy glaze and an easier way to coat the meat. As you can see, this is really sticky. I'm gluing my fingers together. The final steps are to seal the meat in a vacuum bag, adding some pressure to the bond, and then it's off to the fridge to set overnight. And 24 hours later, we'll have steak. So here they are, our filet mignon. And here we got a not so New York steak in the pan and onto the table. It tastes like meat. Our humble $4 a pound stew meat now looks like a $25 a pound prime filet. The FDA lists transglutaminase as generally recognized as safe. It's okay to eat cooked meat that's been glued, but here's the problem. The outside of a piece of meat comes in contact with a lot of bacteria, making its way from slaughterhouse to table, usually Cooking a steak on the outside will kill all that off. The center of a single cut of steak is sterile. That's why you can eat it rare. But glue pieces of meat together, and now bacteria, like E. coli, could be on the inside. Say somebody wants that filet steak rare, the center temperature is not going to reach the temperature that will actually kill the bacteria. And that's also a really, really happy environment for things that can kill you. Pinning down who's using transglutaminase isn't easy. One meat company owner who wouldn't go on camera told us gluing meat is a common practice. And the most glued product by far, filet mignon destined for the food service industry. An industry trade group told us meat glue is most often used where filet mignon is served in bulk at a restaurant, banquet, cafeteria, or hotel. You ask yourself, how can they make money selling these cheap steaks all day long and that look really nice and this is one way of doing it. Our results were dramatic and our stew meat filet looks good, but the American Meat Institute, a lobby for the meat industry, wants to stress meat glue is used in the industry to glue scraps of filet mignon back together. Technically, you're still getting filet meat. And it gives us, it gives chefs and R&D specialists some flexibility to create a very nutritious and healthy product um, and add value to what ultimately, you know, worst case scenario, uh, would just be thrown away. The USDA says transglutaminase must appear on the ingredient label in addition to terms like formed or reformed meat. But that's the second problem. If you're eating glued meat at a banquet or restaurant, you're not likely to see reformed meat on the menu you would never know. We asked the meat lobby in Washington about that. You bring up a valid point and you know they may not see the label but, but what they ought to do if they have concerns and, and we understand that consumers they, they want to understand where their food's coming from. They should ask their wait staff. It has not reached a point where people generally are aware of it and I think it's primarily because like pink slime Nobody knew where it was. Food safety attorney Bill Marler says meat glue is used more than you think, and the meat industry isn't giving consumers the whole picture. I think what their fear, their fear is is that the public's going to look at the information and go, I don't want to eat that. 